Marnie Alton is the creator and founder of the fitness membership M Body. In this interview, we talk retention, growth, and what it takes to create a community that your members love. Check it out. So thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, I think my first question for you is, can you give us a quick recap of what your business looked like before you went online with the membership? Sure. Um, so my name is Marnie Alton and my company is called Embody by Marnie Alton. And it's a fitness company. And um, back in 2014, I opened my first brick and mortar studio in Los Angeles. Um, it was a real like labor of love and credit card debt. It was very much a like solo, any friend who had an ability to, to build anything or really any skill. I, I, would, I was like bribing them with pizza. So it was like a very, very like labor of love moment. And then um, it threw over six years, it grew into one of the most popular studios in Los Angeles and, you know, grew to a staff of, I think about 15 by the time we were at the end. And I really loved it. Um, and I knew that online was an opportunity. I was, the, the whole industry was already shifting in that space. Um, we were just doing well enough that I continued to avoid that because I think probably honestly out of fear of the unknown, you know, cause I had put so much of my heart and soul into six years of this studio. Um, and I didn't know what the other, the other looked like. How much do you do live versus pre-recorded for your content? So initially we, I, I initially thought that it needed to all be pre-recorded. Anything that was going to live evergreen on the platform, I believed should be pre-recorded. That was just my, um, I come from a film background, you know, I am a bit of a perfectionist. I, I thought that's what people needed. Like you have to stop. You can't make a mistake. Make sh I don't know. I wanted to be able to assess all the sound levels were perfect. The lighting, you know, all of that stuff. And so what's kind of wild is right before, literally a week before lockdown, we had actually hired a small crew to film a few pre-recorded videos. And that was, it was such a serendipitous thing. There was no we didn't know anything. We just thought, you know, like I said earlier, like I know things are moving online. So let's just start dabbling in this. And so we had these three professionally recorded, beautiful lighting, cinematographer, director, sound people, you know, all the stuff, editor. And we had these, these videos um, that we'd filmed. We only filmed three of them. They were kind of an experiment and hair and makeup, you know, the whole thing, all the stuff I thought you needed. And, um, and, we we did do those, but then when the when the lockdown happened, we couldn't see anybody. No one could come in and and do all that. You couldn't have a crew of ten people, you know, recording a video. And so we we started doing it much much more um, like bootstrappy with like phones and I don't know microphones on the phones initially because we couldn't get anything better. We're far more evolved from that now. It's wonderful, but. This is a long answer to your question, but it's interesting. So I, I was very like um, insecure about putting these less produced videos out and yet people connected to them more. And I think that was both the, re the relationship of like people seeing real things happening in real time, even if they're captured. I still prefer to teach at a live class and from feedback from what we get, people still prefer to watch the live class versus the polished produced video. So we do 95% lives that then go online as a recorded video. It's almost, we only really record videos now, um, pre-record them when we are traveling or have an event or we, you know, if, if, if to keep content up for people, or if, if like I give my team the holidays off, so we want to make sure there's content that's coming up. So like, we'll do it in preparation for that, but the lives are how we do it. I want to talk about the comments too, because something else I saw on your website while doing research for this interview is you have an email address listed and you're asking for feedback and what people want to see, which I thought was amazing, yeah. you know, asking for that input up front. So how does your members input factor into the decisions you're making about content or where to take the membership? A lot, actually. It's evolved a lot. Um, and I, I am so grateful for, we've really fostered a space of like interactivity where we want to hear. I think that's another thing that's really cool about this dynamic is 
um, about being online and about use screen and the tools that are that they're developing in terms of being able to communicate with the clients. Um, with the community board specifically, because that's a little bit again more living on this on the on the platform. Our comments occur during the lives, but there's a lot of people in there and they talk a lot. So like there can be some things that get missed in there, but we're able to then push them directly into the app into like continue this conversation or ask these questions, or we can ask questions in the community board. Um, and then I'm able to, for example, we'll ask a question. Does this, is this time still working for people now that kids are back in school? Um, is there, uh, is there something you're feeling like, what are your favorite classes? Uh, Hey, if you were a new, if you were, if you were inviting someone new to the platform, what were, what would be five videos you would say would be great for them to try? You, we can really get like really specific that way with them. Um, and we do, and that informs my decision because they are the people using the platform, um, daily, some of a lot of them, you know, and so, um, and then sometimes we'll also just get unsolicited feedback as well, because we really want to create that environment and we always respond to it. Like that's a very big, um, that's a very, very big part of our belief and ethos is like, we hear you and we see you, even if you're on the other side of a camera and it's not a zoom, it's not a two way, but we still listen and we still see you. We just have these other tools to do it. Um, and so I've even gotten to the space where we, you know, we'll ask for music requests or um, we'll learn things like uh, we'll ask about certain videos. Are there certain styles of videos that you're missing or that you're craving? And we'll find things out like, hey, you know, a lot of the community is traveling right now. So they want stuff with no equipment standing, you know, or um, it's the holidays or we're, there's an energy, like it's a new season and I don't have the energy. And so we really want to do more. 30 minute videos. I don't know. Um, and so we can get that feedback and then I can create that can inform my curriculum. I can create curriculum around that to be a better service to people as well, which is great. Initially we did, we have done some fun things that I, that I like. We, um, we will, if we just want to start a conversation, we'll, we'll do like a, Hey, let's have a, like a, a fur baby thread, like put a picture of your, of your, of your dog, you know, of your pet up and, or like, Hey, I feel like I'm, I'm kind of feeling like I need a little, like, um, Hey, tell me a funny story or, uh, Hey guys, what's your favorite fill in the blank, you know, or, um, they'll honestly, at this point now they'll do that to each other as well. We don't even have to necessarily instigate the communication anymore. Um, but they were, I'll tell you, honestly, they weren't, um, they weren't devices that we initiated because we were specifically trying to drive people to the community board. Um, I don't know if that's the right answer, but that's the truth. What we were is we were trying to, we were looking for ways to humanize and like connect on a level with people um, in ways that are also just easy and fun. And plus, honestly, the community board was a savior because a lot of stuff going down with social media platforms are, are, client is, um, a lot of them, they're very aware of, of social issues. They're, they're very conscious people in the world, you know, um, and they're active people, like they're action people. Um, they're, that's drawn to my kind of workout. And so like when, when like social media fatigue comes in or they don't like what's going on, you know, politically on something, they love having the community board because they don't have to enter the world of social media to enter our world of social connection, you know? And that was, that was great. Was there anything about going online with a membership model that surprised you or that you wish you had known about from day one? Don't be afraid to price according to what you need. Be very conscious of, of, what, of what price you're choosing in terms of in terms of your uh, your subscription model. Um, that's that's a really big one. Uh, that was one that took up a lot of my mental energy before we launched. Um, at the time, because over the last two years, we've probably seen I don't know a ten thousand percent increase of like online workouts than we did before. It's, it's crazy. It's blown up. But before, it, online workouts were often, especially if you had a studio, they were often a supplement to the studio, right? So they weren't considered the primary source of, they weren't considered the primary business, or they were just a part of the primary business. 
or they were an online space that really had an engine behind it, right? The, the people that, that, that we would know. And so theirs was, I'm, I'm certainly not um, negating any quality. There's tons of quality, but theirs was like, hey, let's just get a lot of people in. So let's get a price point to a point where we're just like getting as many people as we can into the space um, for a whole bunch of reasons. And for me, that's not, that's not, I, I knew that wasn't going to be where I could start. And so the, that was, it was important to me to have something that was enabling me to still pay my employees and still provide a quality product and still all that kind of stuff. And so it felt scary to start at $39.99 when everybody else seemed to be at $9.99. You know, it's different now. People are charging a little bit more. They're understanding that it takes a little more. But really take the time because you can always lower your price, but you cannot increase your price. Or I, I don't, I mean, not, not immediately and expect to retain everybody. It, like, if you got to go one direction, if you got to figure it out, going, giving people a little bit money off is going to be something that's far more, um, that's far easier to do than suddenly going like, just kidding, guys, it's actually to survive. I'm going to need to charge everybody 20 more bucks a month. It's going to be harder at first to keep your people. 